Right now, we're trying to tackle the problem of teen violence in central Indiana. Yeah, Indianapolis has seen the most homicides this year ever, and 17 of those victims were age 19 or younger when they died. RTV6's Stephanie Wade is working for you, holding people accountable. She's found some warning signs that should not be ignored before another teen falls into harm's way. It seems as though schools are having moments of silence every semester. 13-year-old Matt McGee, 15-year-old Sama Jordan, the list goes on. And what do these victims in particular have in common? Pictures like these on their social media with stacks of cash and guns in hand. From our perspective, it does seem to have ramped up a little bit this, this year in particular. IMPD says they're seeing teens bragging about criminal activity on social media at an alarmingly increasing rate. So there's the challenge, right? So we don't obviously have the resources to monitor every, every single person's uh, social media accounts. Parents say we've got to take these pictures seriously before it's too late. 2014, we were, we were sitting in a courtroom. And how old was he? He was 13. 13 years old. Yeah, he was 13. And why was he in the courtroom? He had a gun. He got caught with a gun. Michelle Grays has been to court 28 times with her son for being involved in gang activity. I overlooked something. I let something slide. I let him get by with something that I shouldn't have. Grays says parents have to acknowledge the role they played, but admits she's struggling fighting the people in her own neighborhood. The adult men in the neighborhood that are leading your sons to destruction, that are telling your sons about how they got over, how they committed this crime, man, and I did this and did this and I got by, and they're feeding them all these cockamamie stories, and they are highlighted stories, they're great stories, they're exciting stories. And these kids are trying to do it. We took these concerns to the schools to see what they can do. I think if it's brought into school, you know, if kids are showing those pictures at school, then it does become a problem for us. And then, yes, we would take it to administration and have them look into it, yeah. And they would refer to either IPS police or IMPD as they felt appropriate. School social workers say the earlier you can address the problems, the better. When we are seeing somebody doing something that's not right, do you think we want to solve that by screaming and yelling? No, sir. Having programs in junior high that target bad behavior before it gets to the high school level where teen violence breaks out on the streets is key. Basically, it's all about teamwork and that it's all about respecting others and stuff. Teaching teens a value for life. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Our Call 6 investigates Jordan Fisher teamed up with Stephanie Way to put this into context for you by researching the number of students and recent graduates killed from each Indianapolis high school since 2015. Here's what we found. Arsenal Tech has the highest rate of student homicides. At least eight students or recent grads there have been killed in the past couple of years. At least seven from Warren Central have been killed since 2015. Four from Ben Davis and two apiece from Arlington, Franklin Central, John Marshall, Northwest, and Pike.